Right, yeah, I think just hang in there because we've also got uh, Shrenik uh, Gujarati of uh, Angel Broking who's joining in on the phone line. And Shrenik, just for your sake, I'm going to walk you through, you know, all the details that we have. Uh, the Q2 PAT has come in at about 230 crore rupees, margins at 15.3% versus 21.6%. Uh, this is, of course, a year-on-year -year, uh, comparison. And as my colleague Yatin was saying, uh, you know, from the looks of it, the top line has come in line with what at least we were expecting. But it's really the profit and the margin uh, picture uh, that seems to have really missed the mark. Uh, Pat is at about 230, as I told you. Uh, is this sort of way off uh, what you were expecting, Shrenik? was 227, 226 crore. So it is uh, more or less in line with our expectations. Okay. When we see the EBITDA margin levels, we expected the EBITDA margin to come at around 15.1%. As against it, the company has delivered a good number. So most likely, we were expecting uh, realizations for the company to decline uh, more, more or less because it has a higher exposure to the West and Northern region, which uh, wherein we have seen a sharp decline in the prices. So uh, on the profitability front, uh, I think it has come as far as expectation. Uh, Shrenik, uh, Yatin here from the research team. Uh, as you rightly mentioning, the realizations have uh, taken a hit. Uh, the market consensus was uh, the realizations would decline mainly 9 to 10 percent year on year. Uh, but I think the realizations have uh, dipped uh, more uh, than uh, 10 percent on a year on year basis. So what is the initial take? Uh, is the real culprit uh, the realization uh, dip and higher freight costs uh, could have possibly eaten into the profits? Absolutely, uh, real, uh, higher realizations and uh, higher freight costs. Uh, we expected freight costs to be on a higher side uh, because uh, uh, the rail and uh, the rail fares, which has been increased uh, by the government, uh, will be seen in, uh, in this quarter. So we expected those things, and, uh, and um, because of those reasons, uh, margins. Uh, we expected our margins uh, on budget to come at around 15.1 percent, but it has delivered a bit on a higher side. So uh, numbers on profitability front, more or less, were in line with the estimate. Mm -hmm. We've also got uh, Naveen uh, Sahadio uh, of Edelweiss who's joining in. Uh, Naveen, would you tend to agree with both uh, Yatin as well as Srinik that, you know, at least on the face of it, uh, it isn't all that bad a number. To some extent, it was pretty much factored in. Yeah, I would uh, hmm. say that to some extent, definitely it has been factored in. Okay. Clearly, what has happened is that uh, this company is basically suffering because of having absolutely no presence in South. I would say reason being that that's the only region where prices have held up firm so far into the year. Rest all other regions they have been fairly weak, and right as rightly pointed out by previous participants, uh, prices have been weak in North and West for which uh, Ambuja did take a beating. So EBITDA, as we see it, down almost 35% and PAT uh, down almost 45%. And I think even in the current quarter, which is like, you know, the September ending quarter, the pain continues to stay. Uh, prices continue to remain weak in the both north and west markets, which will continue to dampen its earnings even in the coming quarter. Uh, well, uh, Naveen Yatin here, uh, just uh, wanted to ask you, uh, as in, uh, you know, uh, the realizations have been much lower than the street expectations. Also, the f higher freight costs have, uh, you know, hit the uh, margins uh, for Gujarat Ambuja cement. Uh, but going forward, what do you feel about Ambuja, you know, in terms of the volume recovery uh, post the monsoon? Do you see some, uh, you know, volume pickup for all of these players uh, being in the western uh, uh, region? Uh, do you think uh, the, uh, the realization recovery or the pricing power that Ambuja has uh, possibly will uh, drive the valuation? from here on and the recovery could be seen the sharpest for Ambuja going forward? I think that's like, you know, will be a tall order to really expect because as we speak, as I said, it, it's going to be a typical seasonally weak monsoon quarter. So at least in the near term, two, three months, at least till September, I would say so, that uh, you're unlikely to see any, like, you know, uptick in, in volumes mm -hmm. and also any per se, any, any uh, uptick in the prices as well. That's the seasonally weak quarter. So I don't think in the near term, if you can really expect, but post that, I think yes, uh, everybody is uh, expecting. But that again, for Ambuja, it will be a bit below the industry because, I mean, in terms of volume growth, it will still be below the industry because they have not really added any capacity. So for them to outperform, I don't think so if that's, like, you know, a right thing to expect, especially in the light when other companies in the north have added capacity. So I don't think volume outperformance is something that you can expect. And pricing also, I, I don't think, like, you know, in the near term, you can expect that. Of course, it's just going to be an industry-related, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, phenomenon. So after monsoons, uh, you would definitely expect some uh, price rise, but not something very out of beat or out of whack for uh, Ambuja per se. 
So, uh, Naveen, uh, given the fact that uh, the outlook remains uh, muted, the results uh, for Ambuja Cement have not that been great. Uh, so, would you keep your uh, rating unchanged on the stock and even in terms of the price target, uh, you know, w- will it be the same or uh, you possibly would tone it down going forward? It's very obvious. It will, we'll have to tone it down. Reason being, firstly, we were not really expecting the North uh, market to be so weak at the beginning of the year. So there are going to be certainly downgrades, uh, like, you know, to ours as well as consensus estimates. And by the way, they are going to be forced downgrades because now, like, you know, two quarters are already over for the year in the calendar year. Uh, it's a calendar year in, com- year in company. So two quarters are already over. Third quarter is obviously a seasonally weak quarter a very tall order to like you know expect much in the balance december ending quarter so i mm. think earning downgrades are definitely inevitable uh, considering that there will be earnings cut and yes i would uh, definitely expect some some uh, cut in the target price as well mm-hmm. we have a hold recommendation but i definitely don't see any any upside risk i mean you know any any risk to that it will probably in all probabilities remain remain a hold uh, kind of a recommendation Raj Shrenik, let me ask you that same question then. Would you back uh, Naveen and, you know, go to the extent of saying that the next few quarters are going to look uh, pretty dismal, not just for Ambuja, but perhaps even the cement industry as a whole? And in that light, would you also then look at, you know, paring down your expectations from that entire pack? See, currently, what uh, we have, we have a neutral trading on the stock with the hmm. target price of 234, and the stock is currently trading at the same level. When we look at the valuations, uh, numbers for the second quarter were in line, but definitely, uh, as the other participant has also said, third quarter will be a weak quarter, being a seasonal quarter. So surely, we will also like to revisit the numbers, and we most probably will be revising uh, the numbers on the downward side. So uh, m- more or less, on what valuation front, the stock looks to be fairly valued, and uh, uh, after downgrading also, the stock, uh, we will have a neutral rating on the stock. Well, uh, Shrenik, uh, coming uh, to you uh, specifically, uh, there have been, uh, you know, talks in the market uh, that going forward cement uh, prices uh, might uh, move up given the fact that a lot of announcements are pending uh, in this uh, session of the parliament and cement demand possibly would pick up. Uh, uh, Do you think in this scenario, the large cap uh, cement companies uh, uh, in terms of the valuation uh, won't be in that advantage versus the mid cap cement company? So uh, in terms of, uh, you know, Ambuja, ACC uh, and Ultratech, uh, which is the, the top large cap pick in the, and in the mid cap space, uh, which uh, other cement uh, recommendations uh, do you have for your clients? On a large uh, large cap front, what we can see is uh, Ultratech. Also, we uh, we had and uh, we have a neutral a neutral trading as uh, valuation from all the large cap stocks are trading at uh, more or less in line with the historical EV by EBITDA. And when we look at the replacement cost, also the large caps are trading at a huge premium to the industry replacement cost of around 140 to 150 dollars. When we see uh, Ambuja, there it is trading at around 175 dollars. When we see at Ultratech, it is trading at around 200. Uh, uh, EV per ton. So uh, this kind of valuation on the current level, looking at the market scenario, looks fairly uh, priced enough, and we uh, we have a neutral rating on uh, on all the uh, large cap stocks. But when we look at the mid cap companies, and definitely it is trading at a huge discount to these large cap companies. Uh, most of the mid cap companies like JK Lakshmi, JK Cement are trading at a EV by EBITDA of around seven to eight eight times, or even lesser than that. So um, uh, we have uh, in the mid cap we have the buy call on uh, stocks like J- JK Lakshmi Cement, JK Cement and Manglam Cement, which have added the capacity in the recent uh, uh, recent period, or just uh, like to finish their capacity addition in the coming coming quarter or two. So going forward, once the demand revives, we will see the volume uh, pick up for these uh, companies, and uh, the companies will be delivering good numbers. So we have a buy call on this mid cap company. All right, Shane again, Naveen, thanks so much uh, for taking time out for us uh, and walking us really through what you made of Ambuja's second quarter showing. Yatin, a quick last question for you then. Uh, what are we expecting from the stock? Because, you know, at least from the sounds of it, both the analysts that we spoke to had more or less factored in a dismal showing. Uh, do you believe the market somewhere, uh, you know, also thinks the same way? Well, uh, Tanya, if you look at uh, ECC results and Ultratech uh, hmm. results, uh, you know, both of them uh, did 